It's important you worship together with your family. Can I get a better amen, everybody? There's just something about it. I, I really do think it's spiritual. Um, the things we face as families and couples and marriages. and uh, it just Everything's better when I started in God's house. Everything's better when I involved God early on. Come on, instead of a rescue mission this week, what if you just invited God in early in the process? You know what I'm saying? Not y'all, but other people who go to our church. Um, a lot of times they'll call me after the decision's already made and it's a disaster. And they'll say, Pastor, what do I do? I pray for a miracle. And I'll say, well, I don't know. You kind of decided to get in this, didn't you? <laughs> now, it'd be easier if we invited God on the first, on the front end of all this than we do on the back end and when we need a rescue. You understand what I'm saying, everybody? And Church is a great way to do that. Like instead of Wednesday when I want to kill my kids... Oh, just me? Really? Just by Wednesday? Is it Tuesday for you? I don't. I mean, I don't know how to do. Yeah, yeah. Earlier on in the process, but instead of that, what if I just at church on Sunday? My kids are up before us this morning, and we're up early on Sunday mornings. And my my son loves God's house. He was running. He was dressed himself, and just loves God's house. And there's just something about setting the tone and tenor for your week together. And I know you're here. I know you know that. I'm just grateful for you. I wanted you to hear. Uh, how grateful I am for you and uh, really quickly I know that you heard this already but let me just add my um, my my congratulations uh, in on it and that is yesterday was serve Saturday you heard um, you heard Brandon talk about that and I just I love that we do this and if you didn't know we do this let me let me inform you like uh, every single month every month of the year uh, we have a Saturday, usually the first part of the month, if we can work it out with the schedule of our outreach partners, uh, a local missions outreach. So we give to missions in three areas here. Uh, international missions, one you know about. Uh, that's the one everybody thinks about when you think about missions. You think about international and giving. But but we also support national missions, like we plant uh, local churches. We're almost, I think, uh, uh, this week, uh, if, I, if my totals are right, we're at about 975, 977 churches we've planted in the United States of America. Come on, everybody. Give God praise for that. In, in Jesus' name, by the spring, uh, we'll be at a thousand churches. And then, we have, and then we have local missions, which is what you see behind me, which is this every single month, we're in an outreach partner. We have uh, partners all over our local area. We decided when we moved here, we weren't going to recreate missions opportunities. We were just going to get in on what people were already doing, like Hill Country Daily Bread. You heard uh, 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 Julie talk about that in church news, and um, like our school here, we we able uh, and and listen, uh, we don't have to do this. I mean, there, they, there's a school district takes care of all that, but this is our home. So, uh, several dozen Dream Teamers were here yesterday and working on planters, and it was a beautiful day outside, and they were just mulching and planting. And you need to get in on that every single month. I'm gonna give you the easiest way to do that. And our Thanksgiving outreach, in case you didn't catch that, we're going to provide meals for hundreds of families this November. Hundreds of families this November. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're going to partner with Hill Country Daily Bread. They have a distribution process. But we're going to provide the meals. You can go pick up a list, a shopping list, just when you're in HEB this week or next week. Uh, grab a few on those, or, or maybe a whole meal or a couple of whole meals. You decide your family wants to provide. Um, they'll provide turkeys uh, at Hill Country Daily Bread. We just, everything else is ours. And, um, and then bring it to church with you. You'll see uh, uh, in our serve tent, you'll be able to see uh, where to drop that off. But the easiest way to do that is just download the serve app. Uh, so whatever app store you have, Google or Apple uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, app store, download the serve app. Search for City Hills Church, Texas, because that's where we are. There's only two City Hills churches in all the world. There's one here and one in Knoxville. This is a true story the other day. Um, my friend who pastors City Hills Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, he called me and he said, he took a screenshot and texted to me and then called me and he said, hey, um, I want to join a small group at your church. And I was like, okay, I mean, it's a little weird because you pastor your own church and you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, but okay. And he's like, someone just registered a men's small group. They're going to Colorado to go elk hunting this fall. 
but they're from your church, but they registered it at our church. So I just want you to know I'm joining that small group. So make sure you search for the right City Hills Church. Uh, we're the ones in Texas. Uh, everything's better in Texas. So you'll, it won't take you long to look around. You'll realize this isn't, we're not in Tennessee. So, um, But make sure that you uh, register to serve with us. Let's just make a difference this fall together. Can I get a good amen, everybody? Like, let's... If church is all about you, I'm going to be honest with you, you can come here, and, and that's, I'm certainly not going to tell you you can't come here, but you're just not going to love it, really. You're really not going to love it. Eventually, you're going to get tired of hearing me talk about serving and loving people, and you're going to find somewhere else to go to church. It's happened for the last five years. People just say, I don't know if I like all this talk about other people. Well, tough, because Jesus, it was all about other people. Jesus didn't save you just for you. He saved you to get on mission and serve other people are you there say amen everybody but Rachel say amen I make her sit on the front row just because I don't know that you're here and um, and so much going on this fall Uh, I'm really excited about the turn uh, of events uh, happening Uh, I'll get into today's message really quick Uh, I have a simple message for you Uh, to conclude this series on Plan to Stay. But uh, we are uh, in this season, the fall season, we always kind of take a turn towards uh, others and serving and how we can reach the world and really what we can do together. Uh, Next week, I kick off a brand new three-part series we're calling Out of the Cave, uh, all about uh, overcoming depression, anxiety, worry, fear. If you you or anyone in your life uh, is battling depression, Uh, is walking through a dark season if you have ever here's what I know about you if you're not in it right now you've probably just come out of one or you're going to walk into a season like that everybody's been in a dark season me include everybody's walked through dark I think the last 18 months 20 months it's probably been worse uh, than at any other time and so we're going to talk about it and we're going to put some light on it and in Jesus name we're going to walk out of the cave together and into the rest of this year and the rest of our lives healed and whole together do not miss it and don't come alone the next three weeks and then four weeks from today our biggest and best series of the year at the movies everybody November the 14th we kick off at the movies our team's working diligently on at the movies right now and guys it's just going to be the best thing I'm just telling you the place will be packed because you bring friends and family not because we we do we do a lot of mass marketing we do a lot of stuff but it's going to be because you bring a friend a family member a co-worker a neighbor I'm asking you let's just go all out like this at the movies let's make it the biggest at the movies we've ever had together and let's see a bunch of people give their lives to Jesus together this November amen everybody let's see that together it's going to be an amazing time all right Uh, Let me pray for you, and then I'll jump into today's message, mainly because Ken's fingers are getting tired. (laughs) So, Father, thank you for today. Help me do a good job. Open up my heart. Come on, pray this way. God, speak to me today. Whatever you want to say to me, my answer is yes. Ready to receive today. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, shout a better amen. Amen Amen for the person beside you. All right, all right, all right. I'm just, I got to... I may have to work with you a little bit, you know, just maybe at 9 o'clock. I just need to kind of pull you out a little bit, and I'll, we'll exercise it together. All right, everybody, <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it together. Uh, the holidays are approaching. Have you already started Christmas shopping? Where's everybody who started Christmas shopping? Just keep your hands up. We need to know who to hate. I could have guessed you too. We need to know who, who, who it's. You don't even think about it till at least December and usually later into December. Where are all you people at? Yeah, me and me. We, we all may have to fly to Los Angeles and open up some of the containers ourselves because they're all in port. But we're going to get something, okay? And we're going we're gonna to have stuff for, uh, for Christmas. But the holidays are approaching. Thanksgiving quickly approaching. And uh, even Halloween, Superhero Sundays on, on somebody said, uh, Pastor, do we celebrate Halloween? Well, no, we just celebrate candy. Come on, somebody. You come to my house, this true story, for the last five years we pastor this church, you come to my house, we don't just hand out candy, you get an at-the-movies invite. Everybody who comes to my house for candy gets an at-the-movies invite. So, yeah, we celebrate that, we do. And then my kids tithe their Reese's on their candy take. That's just what we do. But uh, every holiday season, we kind of focus our attention on what we could do together. We culminated every year in a vision offering, uh, usually called our legacy offering. This year, we transitioned that to be our plan to stay groundbreaking offering. Why don't you reach around you? There's a piece of paper there uh, that's talking about it, and then there's a commitment card. And I'll reference both of those uh, here 
uh, in the course of the message, but I want you to put them in your hand. Remember these two dates. Our groundbreaking offering is Sunday, December the 12th. It is our normal legacy vision offering season anyway. We always take a vision offering on the second Sunday of December, uh, what we could do together. We have a lot of vision together. But we just want to realize what God wants me to have. I don't want everything. I want everything God wants me to have. Yeah, the biggest frustration in your life, look at me, the biggest frustration you'll face is if you, if you think that everything is, is attained. Everything's not attained. I don't want everything that I can have. Paul said, everything's lawful. Like, I, I could go out and chase all kinds of things. I don't want to chase everything. I just want to chase after everything God wants me to have. That's good for dating. I'm already preaching, not even in my notes. But if you're single today, I don't want to date everybody. I want to date the one God wants me to have. Can I, I don't want to, you need to hear this. I don't want to just chase after every business opportunity. I want the one God wants me to be involved in. I, I want the right, I don't want just any job to pay the bills. I want the job God wants me to have. I don't want to go to any school. I want to go to an SEC school. That was, there's a little pair, uh, just parentheses right there. Specifically a winning SEC school. I want to, I want to go somewhere like specifically not uh, Texas did they win last night anyway I don't want to go to I, I just I want what God wants me to have and God wants me to be a winner so I can't be a longhorn can I get a better amen, amen. <laughs> let me take you back to a passage of scripture we looked at if you have your Bibles open them to the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah uh, is uh, remember in Israel at this time he is prophesying to the children of Israel who've been taken captivity into Babylon he's actually uh, uh, he's actually prophesying to the southern kingdom which is Judah Judah has been taken uh, into captivity in Babylon and Jeremiah is still in Jerusalem but there's a bunch of uh, wannabe prophets that are with the uh, Hebrew people in Babylon and they're prophesying this is not going to last long this is going to be easy this is just don't don't get set. Listen. Don't get settled in. Don't buy anything. Don't just use everything you can get, but don't really commit. Look into my eyes real quick while you're flipping to Jeremiah. Look at me. There's a religious system going on in the world right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and just punch it right in the mouth if you'll let me for a moment. That tells you you don't have to commit to church. It really. It's you're the church. You can have church at home. You can have church on your phone. You can have church with just you and the trees and the stumps and all that sort of stuff. And it, it really doesn't take all of this, and it really not, it's not about gathering together, and you don't have to serve, and you sure don't have to tithe, and you don't have to, you don't have to pray, and you really, once you, you know, you, you, you just be a good person, be a believer. It, there's always going to be false prophets telling you it takes less than what it actually takes to make it through. I've never met someone who says, God's calling me to more. Most of the time when people meet with me, they go, Pastor, God, God's telling me this is my season to rest. <laughs> Why doesn't God call you and go, uh, Pastor? Uh, God told me this is my season to serve both services, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Why? And I've never, Sue, I've never had that. Nobody ever calls me and goes, Pastor. The God told me I'm supposed to tithe twenty percent. Most people call me and go, Pastor. I prayed and God said I didn't have to tithe. <laughs> okay. What am I going to say? Like, there's always prophets telling you it's going to be less. And Jeremiah sort of punches it right in the mouth. And he goes, hey, everybody, it's not going to be two years. It's not going to be that. I want you to settle down there. A matter of fact, you're going to be there 70 years, he tells them. Like, just settle down and decide to get committed. Just decide... I'm going to be here, so I'm going to make it better. I'm not going to complain about where I am. I'm going to improve where I am. I'm not going to be a taker where I am. I'm going to be a contributor where I am. I'm not going to always ask for more. I'm going to always ask, how can I give more? Are you there today? By the way, this is a way to live your life as a believer in Jesus. Is not to always look at what can I take from this relationship? What can I get out of this job? What can I get out of this marriage? What can I get out of this friendship? What can I get out of this career? What can I get out of you? No, no, no. Every time I meet somebody, I think, what can I give? What, what is it about them that I could deposit into them? What, what, could I, what contribution could I make? How could I, how could I make their lives better? Let me, this is not a marriage series, but let me just give you some advice husbands perk up at this right here just think okay now you're gonna have to think a little bit higher plane but listen to me just think what if every time you were with your wife you thought what can I do for her not what can she do for me 
How can I serve her? What, how, how could I make it better? How, how, could, how could I clean up my own drawers off the floor? <laughs> how, could, how could I cook dinner? Well, I'm not good at everything. You can find something. Get you one hamburger helper meal and do it every time. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Just find that one thing. Just how can I be a servant here? And so Jeremiah tells these, these Hebrews, hey, you're going to be here 70 years. You might as well... Dig in, uh, verse 4 of Jeremiah 29. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all of the captives and all the exiles in Babylon from Jerusalem. Verse 5. Build homes and plan to stay. Build homes and plan to stay. I want you to underline that in your Bible. I want you to put it on your mirror. I want you to write that on an index card. I want you to put it on a post-it note. Put it right there. Uh, on your car, on your steering wheel, build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens, eat the food they produce, marry, have children, find spouses for your children. By the way, it didn't say let your children find their own spouses. Um, I believe in arranged marriages. You ought to as well. Find spouses for them. That's what it says. So you can have a whole lot of grandchildren and multiply and don't dwindle away and work. Everybody say and work. Everybody say and work. It's not a four-letter word. I know there's some four-letter words you shouldn't say, but work is not one of them, all right? And work work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you. And if you'll do that, if you'll pray for the city that I sent you in, and if you'll pray for the welfare of the city that I sent you in, its welfare will determine your welfare. In other words, how I handle this season that I'm in will determine what I get out of this season. What I put into it, what I decide that my faith is going to stretch, and what I, whatever I decide, I'm going to put down roots, and I'm going to plant in this, and I'm not going to keep looking for better, and I'm not going to keep going there and looking over there. Listen, your marriage will get better when you stop looking for another spouse. I promise. It's, just, it's an easy way to, when you just decide, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to work on what I got and invest in this, instead of always looking for that and what's next and who there and the, your job will get better if you go in tomorrow morning and just decide I'm not going to just take a paycheck here I'm going to do something that adds value here and even if God has something else for you down the line listen to me God will not unlock what's next until I start contributing into what's now so so I want you to so I want you to build homes and I want you to plan to stay there and and so we've sort of adopted this as our journey for the last uh, six weeks together, and and we really are a church of spiritual journey. If you're new here, uh, there's four things we think everybody. I don't think they're my spiritual steps. I don't think they're our church's spiritual steps. I think they're God's spiritual journey for everybody that every everyone is on. And and we say it like this: If you don't know it, write it down like this: That we want you to know God. We don't just want you to know about God. I don't just want a bunch of Bible scholars. I want a bunch of people in love with Jesus. Jesus goes to the Pharisees one time, Brandon, and he says, listen, you know what, you read the scriptures because you, you think that in them you find life, and you don't realize they're talking about me. There's nothing wrong with the, uh, the three or four Bible studies a week. Just so you know, though, those Bible studies ought to turn into a life-giving relationship with Jesus. Like everything in my life, I know God. I'm, I'm in love with Jesus. And, and, and then when I, when I do that, it, it opens my eyes to, I've got issues. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got issues. Some of you actually are sitting by your issue. You know, what I mean? like yeah, what you wanted to say is you're my issue. But anyway, that everybody's got issues. I've got issues. You've got issues. And and so when you when you finally get in a relationship with a holy God, you realize it opens up your eyes and you go, Oh my Lord, I've got issues. I gotta settle. I can be saved and still captive to all of my issues, and you need to find freedom. Say amen to that. You need to get past your past and find so many a lot of people are doing that right now in a small group and and, and settling their yesterdays. And then I think the best part of Christianity really happens after you decide, I need Jesus and I've got issues, and that is I've got purpose. I want you to discover the purpose God has for your life. We say it in these four simple statements that you know God, that you find freedom, that you discover your purpose. The, the greatest days of your life are the day you're born and the day you figure out why 
you were born. Why God put you on this planet. Why, why God made you how he made you. Why you walk through what you walk through. Why you have the experiences, the gifts, the talents, the personality, the likes, the dislikes. Why all of that stuff meshes together. You're not just who you are by accident. God made you on purpose and with a purpose. And listen, and when you discover, when you go back to the designer and you discover why God designed me like he designed me, then you realize, oh, all of this stuff, me knowing God, having a vibrant relationship with Jesus, settling all of my issues, even the stuff I'm still working through, and, and realizing God has a purpose, all of that works together so that I can do something with my life that lives beyond my life. So that I can make a difference in the lives of others. Like, like we're doing in Serve Saturday. So that I can make a difference. So that I can be. The Bible says it like this. That there are going to be people tomorrow morning that walk on the Van Rupp campus. 80 plus teachers, administrators, janitors, cafeteria workers that walk here. That see a redone flower bed. And you think how spiritual is flower beds. I'll tell you. The Bible says it like this. They're going to see your good works. And they're going to glorify your father which is in heaven. In other words, they see what you do for others and they go, there must be something different about them. They're purpose-driven people. They're make-a-difference people. Now, I'm not going to look to them. I'm going to look to their God and go, tell me what you did in them and then do it in me. <laughs> tell, tell me what they have. I want what they have that makes a difference in the world. Are you there, everybody? But the world doesn't say. The world says something totally different. The world's plan is this. I want you to know all about me. I want somebody to know me, know, know who I am, know what I do, know, know my, this is, I, want, I want everybody to, I want to find fame for me. I want to be an influencer. I even bought an influencer hat, you know, a big Stetson hat. You ain't rode a cowboy, you ain't rode a horse not one time in your life and you're going to wear a Stetson cowboy hat trying to, trying to be an influencer. And I'm just trying to discover about who I am and I, people like me and I've got followers. We even call them on social media followers. How many followers do you have? <laughs> None. Your own wife don't follow you. There ain't nobody following you. None. I, uh, you know, followers. I, I just I want to find fame, and I'm just out here to make a dollar. This is the and listen. This was the way the Hebrews were looking at their time in Babylon. I'm just gonna take it about me. I'm just going I'm gonna take everything I can get here. I'm I'm, I'm gonna be a taker and not a giver. I'm gonna, I'm gonna receive and not give. I'm going to always live my life. And listen to me. I have met Christians throughout two decades of ministry who live their lives in the posture of always taking. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Just accept this as a fact. Just trust me in this fact. If you live your life always taking, you will always need more. But if you'll live your life in the posture of giving, you will always have more than enough. I'm just telling you, if you live your lives always thinking about me, me, my comfort, my, my stuff, my likes, my dislikes, my, you'll always have, that's a bottomless pit. You are a bottomless pit of selfishness. So am I, by the way. I am. But God hardwired me. When I pour out myself for others, God fills me up to overflowing. He says it like this, that he gives seed to the sower. The Bible said. You know why that is? Because when people are sowing, God says, I'm going to keep giving seed to people who are using the last seed I gave them. I'm preaching better than you're amening today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep putting stuff in the pocket of people who empty their pockets. I'm going to keep putting joy in the heart of people who pour out joy to everybody else. I'm going to put peace in the heart of people who are peacemakers. I'm going I'm to keep giving seed to people who are sowing. And if you look around and you don't have enough seed in your life, it could be because you haven't sown anything. All right, it is good, Aubrey, I appreciate that, but it's good. Whether you said that or not, I'm going to preach it like I feel it. Just Y'all can, y'all can stick around for the next one if you want to. This has been a make a difference kind of season. That we're, Next week I'm going to talk about your feelings and y'all going to love it. Anyway, you can be a difference maker. I'm going to keep pushing you to be a dip. By the way, if you think, man, I can't wait till we get out of this series, just wait, wait till next year. I'm going to keep talking about making a difference. I will not let this be a lazy, all about me, inclusive, holy huddle kind of church. It will never, ever, 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 ever be that kind of church. It's always going to be about, make, you can make a difference. You can make a difference in your neighbor's life. If you've got a neighbor that you know is battling depression, this is the right season. You can make a difference. You don't have to do anything but bring them. I'll do what you can't do if you'll do what I can't do. 
I, you just, this is a make a difference kind of season. And, and, and a coworker and a neighbor and a family member needs God's plan in their life. And it's easy to get sidetracked on the plan God has for you. I think the best illustration of that is the life of Abraham. Uh, flip over in your Bibles. I know you've been in Jeremiah, but flip back to Genesis. Abraham uh, is known as Abram at this point. He's interacting with God early on in his uh, life. Most historians believe Abram to be extremely wealthy. Abram's actually from Ur of the Chaldees, which is in Babylon. So Jeremiah, a few hundred years later, is probably prophesying to the land that Abram had lived in, maybe even around the same geographical uh, area. And Abram um, gets a promise from God. God calls Abram out of Babylon, out of Ur, and he says, hey, I want you to I want you to go to a land that I'm going to show you. I wish God showed me the land before he called me, but it doesn't work that way with God. With, with us, it's show me and then I'll follow. With God, it's follow me and then I'll show you. <laughs> right? And so he tells Abram, hey, if you'll follow me, I'll, I'll show you the land that I want you to. But, but Abram gets sidetracked. Genesis 11, verse 27. Genesis eleven twenty seven. 27, you can look on the screen. This is an account of Terah's family. Terah is Abram's father. Terah was the father of Abram, who has two brothers, Nahor and Haran. Uh, Aubrey, Megan, if y'all haven't settled on a boy's name, I think Nahor is a good one. So uh, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran is the father of Lot. Now, the Bible's just giving us this because Lot's going to show up later on in the story. Lot is Haran's son, Abram's nephew. Are you following? But Haran dies before they ever leave Babylon. He dies in the land of his birth while his grandfather, Terah, is still living. So Haran's probably young. If his father, Haran, and his grandfather are still living, he's probably young. And he dies in Babylon. Let me pause here and tell you, if you're ever going to follow God, there's probably going to be death in the wake. There may be some death of relationships. There may be some death of, I thought it was going to go this way. I thought it was supposed to be like this. There may be some death of expectations in the wake. There may be, as a matter of fact, this is for somebody today that you thought it was going to go this way. And in the, when you look behind you, you're following God, you look behind you, and there's death there. That doesn't necessarily mean God wasn't there. It just means it had to happen so I could move on to where I'm moving to. Are you with me, everybody? The death of this dream, the death of this relationship, the death of this marriage, the death. God, God the I'm not telling you God calls that, but God could rescue that, redeem that, and still bring you to Canaan where he's promised you to be. Say amen to that, everybody. So Haran dies in Abram. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor get married. Now, I think that's interesting. So Haran uh, 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 is already there. He dies there. Abram and Nahor get married there and um, the name of Abram's wife is Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife is Milcah. Terrible girl names. I'm not re recommending that for anybody but Sarai was unable to become pregnant. She doesn't have any children. The implication is Milcah probably has kids and one day Terah took his son Abram and his daughter-in-law Sarai and his grandson Lot. Now this is, this is Haran's child. This is, this is Haran who died's child and he moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. And he was headed for the land of Canaan. Underline this in your Bible. I didn't on the screen. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. And Terah lived 205 years and died while still in Haran. Terah was headed to this um, land of promise that God had promised his Family And there's no real implication. that The Bible doesn't give us any details about why they stopped in Haran. But the Bible said they settled there. It's interesting that the place that they stopped and settled had the same name of his dead son. We don't know if he named the place Haran after his pain. Or, or that the place was already called Haran when he got there. Here's all that we know. There's something in Haran that caught up with Terah and his past caught up with him. It seemed like Terah was more interested in running for something than pursuing something. Now listen to me. If you live your life running from something and 
and not focused on pursuing the promises of God. If you don't have any vision for what's ahead, and all you know is I'm running for, this is a word from, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit just told me, this is a word from God from somebody in this service, in this room. If all you do is run from that situation, and you don't have a vision for where you're headed next, you'll end up halfway between here and there, and settling for less than God's best in your life. You can't write it down like this. If you give in to your past, you will ultimately die to your future. For some reason, Terah's past catches up with him in Haran. And he settles there and he dies there. 205 years old and he dies there in Haran. It, it, at some point, you're going to have to stop running from something. But Brandy and I were both raised in very legalistic, religious type systems. But here, we, we decided a long time, and we, we walked away from that uh, uh, several, over a decade ago, 12, 15 years ago. We decided, listen, when we planted this church, we weren't going to run from who we used to be. We're going to pursue all that God wants us to be. Because if all you do is, if you build your life on what I'm not and who I'm not and where I'm running from instead of where I am and what God wants for me, then eventually you'll settle for somewhere in between and you'll not have either. Are you still with me, everybody? If you give in to your past, it ultimately, you die to your future. So how do you do it? What are you going to have to do if you're going to get where God calls you? I'm glad you asked. This is, by the way, this is what our church is going to have to do. We're not going to be able to just settle on where this is who we used to be. I look back at pictures and I think, man, look at all these people. Look at all these people who come through our church. Look at all these amazing people we baptized. Look at all the amazing people that, for whatever reason, have come or moved or gone. And I think, man, God, what are we doing? Why, why is this? But listen, I'm not running from who we used to be or where we were. I, everything we do in this church is vision focused. I'm going to keep moving forward. That's that's why we tell you all the time. It's why we're going to write it on the walls of our new building. The best is yet to come. Why? Because I'm always pursuing God further. I can't get hung up in my past or my hurt or who left or why it didn't or why it took so long or where the money was or why they're here or why they're not here. I just got to keep going where God wants me to go. Are you there? Say amen. Here's the way you do that. Number one, write this down. You manage your memories you got to manage your memories. You can't just have them. you got to manage them because <laughs> memories will lie to you. I, I, to talking with a psychotherapist at one uh, point, and this is interesting. It's, it's, it's an interesting concept to me that um, she was saying uh, every time you have a memory that comes up into your mind, Aaron, every time you do, it's like a CD that you take out of the rack of your mind. And, and, and you, you remember, y'all going to have to be a little bit older. Um, you remember the CD that used to have like the eight disc player in your car? You know what I'm talking about? And it would it would move around and it'd go around to Mariah Carey. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's Christmas time, Mariah Carey. You know what I'm saying? Or or the Eagles or whatever. I don't, whatever whatever. It was. And 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 he, every time you take a CD, a memory out of that. Listen to me. Your fingerprints get on that CD, on that memory. And then when you put it back in your mind, it now has the fingerprints of the time you took it out. So over time, your memory starts changing because it now you have fingerprints on the season I was... Are you still there, everybody? On the season I'm in right now. you got to learn how to manage your memories or you'll end up at the end of your life thinking it was something it wasn't. You'll romanticize the place that you were in, the sin that you were in, the relationship that you you forgot he hit you. Because you every time you pull it back out, all you think about is I wish it was I, I wish we were back together. I wish it was you you just forget. You're going, you can't just have a memory. You gotta manage. No, no, no. I'm, that's why the Bible says take every thought captive. I'm gonna decide. I'm not gonna let my memories catch up and I'm not gonna let it overcome who I am. I'm not gonna talk about the good old days all the time and what we used to have. I'm gonna manage my memories to go forward. I I, I remember. Several years ago, Brandon and I, uh, we didn't have kids yet. We were living in South Mississippi, and we would go over the, the Louisiana line uh, to Louisiana to eat uh, a lot, um, a lot, a lot. And anyways, and because Louisiana food, Southern food is the best food in all the world. And if you, if you get deeper into Southern food, Louisiana food is better than all the, uh, it's supreme among all the other southern foods and so we would go over and we went to Covington Louisiana uh, Jason you know where this is we went to Covington Louisiana downtown Covington uh, on the north shore of, of of Lake Pontchartrain outside of New Orleans and um and we were walking around we had a little date day and we were walking around and there was a there was a little house that was a Thai food place 
And I remember, I remember my trepidation, but I like, I like, I like Chinese food, and Thailand is close somewhere, right? Ipso facto, I'm going to love Thai food, and so we go to this Thai food place, true story, we go to this Thai food place, long story short, I ate, you know, healthy, um, a lot, and, and then we drive home, you know, it's 30, 45 minutes back across into Mississippi, we drive home, and that night, about 2 a.m., I was confronted with the beast of Thailand, I fought a Thai devil, there was a demonic principality from Thailand that met me. In my bedroom. (laughs) Are you with me, everybody? To this very day, I promise you that was 15 years ago. To this very day, I have yet to eat Thai food again. I get that same. I just, you get that, you get that. Are you with me, everybody? If you're not careful, you, Pastor Daniel said this a couple of weeks ago. You will bleed on people who never cut you. you. You'll end up hurt people, hurt people. You'll end up hurting everyone around you based on the memory because you didn't manage the memory well. I, you don't. You got to understand the power of your memories to keep us from experiencing the best that God has for us. I'm thankful for where we've been. I'm thankful for a church of over 500 members. I'm thankful that over 250 have gone through growth track. I'm thankful we put 150 currently in small groups right now. I'm thankful we baptized over 300. I'm thankful that hundreds and hundreds of people have made fresh starts with God and took a book, actually took a next step and made a fresh start with God. I'm thankful we've given away over 100 thousand dollars to missions since we started the church but listen to me I got to manage my memories and so do you write this down don't assume that all that God has done is all that God wants to do don't assume that your best days are behind you no 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 my best days aren't behind me the best is yet to come it's right in front of me my best days are still ahead of me your best days are still ahead of you my best message I haven't preached yet our best sermon series we haven't had yet our best baptism Sunday hasn't occurred yet our biggest small group launch hasn't happened yet the biggest class of people going through growth track hasn't happened yet our biggest Easter hasn't happened come on our biggest serve project hasn't happened yet just, let's just don't assume that all that God has done in my life is all that God wants to do in my life. There's always more. Philippians 3.13, Paul said, I focus on this one thing. This one thing, Paul said, if you want to know what the focus of my ministry is, it's this. I wake up every day forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I forget the past. and I, Let me break some shame off of you. Anybody a sinner? Let me see all the sinners in the room. Every hand ought to be up. Your hand's not up. Let me break some shame off of you. If you've been born again, if you've given your heart to Jesus, you've been raised to new life and baptism, there's a new spirit that lives on the inside of you. You can walk away from your past and walk into all the future God has for you. Today, just break off of you all of that. It wasn't the best. I'm going to forget what was behind me and pressed towards what's in front of me. Say amen to that. Let me pause here and tell you that's true for our church. Our best days are not behind us. They're in front of us. you got to manage your memories. Number two, you got to refuse to settle. you got to refuse to settle. I saw this funny. I love commercials. Anybody else commercial fans? You're like, I watch TV just for the commercials. Now, they're getting a little... It's getting where you can't. Y'all don't, do, y'all don't watch... TV is that thing that your Netflix comes through. Back in the old days, there used to be cable, and we would have to wait till next week to watch Blacklist. You know, there was this week, and then you'd have to go to bed not knowing, and then next, next week on Thursday night, you would watch it. Does anybody remember the old days like this? Okay. And I used to, I, I love, and I, there was this, that, <laughs> this, take a look at this, my favorite commercial. Mom, Pa, why do we settle for cable? Because we're settlers, and that's what we do. But with DirecTV and AT&T, you can get your TV and wireless service from one provider. Are not we your providers? Do we not provide you with this succulent jackrabbit pie, this delicious gray water soup, and a single lick off the family lolly every harvest moon? Don't be a settler. Get a $100 reward card when you switch to DirecTV. That has nothing to do with my message except Settlers. That was the funniest commercial series. Does anybody remember that? There was a whole series of these. Go home and go to YouTube and look at Settlers. It's the funniest thing. It was all DirecTV. This is not an ad for DirecTV, but you can take it off the screen. It, it was just the funniest thing, I thought, about, about settling. Listen to me. Write this in your notes. I didn't put it on the screen, but write it in your notes. Dreamers don't settle. They pioneer. Dreamers don't. No, for real on the DirecTV, guys. Dreamers don't settle. They pioneer. 
Dreamers don't settle. Yeah, Tara decided to just settle there. Just I'm just going to stay right here. I'm just going. This is where I'm always going to be. I'm just going to settle where this is. This is good enough. This is just always what it's going to be. This is always what I'm going to have. Uh, I, it, listen, if you hang out with settlers, guess what you're going to do. If you date settlers, guess what you're going to do. If you marry settlers, guess what you're going to do. Get in a small group. That's what you're going to do. Find freedom from all of that stuff. Not freedom from your marriage. You're just going to get better and, and, and healed through that. You, you'll adapt to their conditions, their mindset, their reasoning, their conversation. I didn't used to be a homebody till them. I didn't used to do de- till them. I didn't, the people, I, the settling, you. I used to have a vibrant relationship with God. Then I started hanging out with them, and now I've gotten uh, uh, just lax. And I used to pray every day, and then I started hanging out with them, and I've settled into this. Dreamers don't think about... Settlers, settlers always talk about the dreamers. You didn't catch that, I'll say it again. Dreamers don't sit around thinking about all the people who've settled. They just get up and dream every day and keep moving their life forward. It's settlers who always say, well, I mean, it must be nice. It must be nice to be able to have a house like that. It must be nice to be able to drive a car. It must be nice to be able to have a relationship like that. No, 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 it must not be nice. I got up today and worked on all this. I got up today and tried for all of this. I got in counseling and I bettered myself and I read a book and I got in a small group and I prayed and I did it. I'm a dreamer. I'm thinking there's more in my life. Life, say amen to that everybody do not settle refuse to settle listen to me we have refused to settle as a church come play key so I'll stop we refuse to settle we have a vision we refuse to settle in the in the movie theater we refuse to settle in a school we refuse to settle and it could have been easy to settle into that movie theater go back to it when they took the chains off the door that is It would have been easy to settle back into the conference center. I loved that conference center we were just in. It was beautiful. I loved the lobby. They made coffee for us. That was nice. I loved, they cleaned it. We paid people to clean that conference center. I I swept the floor you're on today on Friday night because nobody cleans this. Anyway, that's another story. Um, We could have settled. We could have settled a long time ago for a whole lot less, but we decided not to. So our team has vetted and prayed and cried and asked God and trusted and moved forward on a new lease. Matter of fact, it's on that document I asked you to hold in your hand earlier. Why don't you take it out and look at it? We're still in the uh, phase of engineering and our architectural design. Matter of fact, we're working uh, diligently right now with what it's going to look like on the inside. But a couple of years ago, Actually, three years ago, three and a half years ago, the first time I showed you these pictures, I got the same pictures. I put them on my desktop. I've changed laptops since then. and I've changed phones and iPads, and I still have them saved everywhere. I don't know what the lobby's going to look like when it's all done, but it may look like this. You enter through this lobby and there's a lot of people buzzing, connecting, excited about church, building family. Family happens in lobbies like that. Not people who just come in and then walk straight out and leave. No, 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 no. They build family in lobbies like this. I refuse to settle for a church that just comes in at one service and walks right back out. I want a church that connects and a church that's on mission, a church that's in small groups. I picked this picture because I kind of like it. It looks like these people are in a small group right here. and These people are kind of in a small group. And those people are kind of in a small group. I don't know what they're waiting on. They're probably early for the second service. That's my guess. They're just gathering. It's probably not going to have a ceiling like that. I'm pretty sure it's not. We already looked at the ceiling, but it's going to be something like that. And, and you're going to walk... You're going to walk right through this lobby. When you go right into the front of the lobby, there's this big feature wall that you'll see right there. And when you walk behind that feature wall, you'll find a children's space. You'll check your kids into state-of-the-art, age-specific classrooms. We built four amazing classrooms. They will kind of look like this. There'll be a theater room like this right here to the top left where our elementary students and then our and then our junior high and high school students will have a space to gather. It'll be a theater that'll be cutting edge where they can have church. I don't just want them to be babysat. Listen, at 10, 12 years old, we're not babysitting. I'm, I, in that room right there, we're going to raise kids that know how to pray and how to worship and how to fast and how to read God's word and how to, how to, how to serve and how to be in a small group. We'll, we'll have rooms for your babies to 
play and the cabinets may look like a good picture the cabinets may look like that they'll be taught God's word they're being taught today they have a purpose and a calling and they're created I, every, every morning I drop my children off to school we pray in the car together and I tell them you're a leader not a follower Henry asked me daddy almost every week daddy what's it mean to be a leader not a follower <laughs> I tell him every week you're a leader, not a father. You're an influencer. You're not influenced by the world. You walk into this school with purpose. We're going to train your children in rooms just like this. You're going to come into an auditorium. It actually may look something like this. A big welcoming auditorium has cutting edge audio and video and lighting equipment. We're not trying to entertain you on that stage. No, no, no. I just want to take a stage just like that. It's actually going to be very, very similar to this room. Where you can encounter the presence of the living God. You see those chairs right there? Those are your lost family. Those are your neighbors and co-workers you've been praying for, working with the last 10 years on the line. Uh, those are your son who walked away from God at 18. It's your granddaughter who's lost. And on that platform or worship team that they're not just talented they are but they're anointed the word of God's preached from there it's going to transform your life people are saved in that room marriages get healed in that room addicts get delivered in that room families get pastored there prayer is offered there people discover their purse there listen and the church the church of Jesus Christ is mobilized in this room to leave this room and go make a difference this isn't the end look at this get a good look at it it's going to change a little bit there's actually a really big screen on the front in the center see that LED wall it's actually floor to ceiling the one we're buying it's going to, the one you're buying it's going to be awesome you're going to love it you're going to absolutely love it but this isn't the end this is the beginning listen to me I, we refuse to settle in this room there's another room. There's another place. There's more people. There's more lost people. And we're going to do everything. We're not going to stop until we reach every person in the San Antonio Hill Country with the life-giving message of Jesus. Until we plunder hell and populate heaven. We will not stop pushing, moving, going. I refuse to settle. I refuse to settle. I refuse to settle. Here's the last thing i got to pray. I'll write this in your notes and then we'll go. we got to keep making bold decisions in the right direction. If you want to keep moving forward in your life you got to keep making bold decisions in the right direction that's why we're raising half a million dollars to build this building out it's a shell right now if you were there a couple of weeks ago about a month ago now our, our, our church family we opened it up it's a big dirty concrete shell it's even more dirty today than it was then because they started building the other side there's no AC there's no lights there's no bathrooms we got to build all of that. we got to put all of that in. We have 9,104 square feet to fill up. We're going to keep making bold decisions in the right direction. And if your life wants to move forward, listen, you're going to have to keep making bold decisions in the right directions. Like, like, the, like the past two months, we're almost, I'm sorry, the last three months, we're almost 50 people, August, September, and October, almost 50 people have joined City Hills Church just in the last three months, everybody. It could be you. Just keep making bold decisions. Just, just, just say, I'm going to go to growth track. That's a bold decision in the right direction. I'm going to start tithing. I'm, I'm imploring you to start tithing. That's a bold decision in the right direction. I just got a report, a year-to-date report that we give to our trustees. We have a strong financial accountability. And, and I'll just be really honest with you. Look at my eyes. They're dream teamers. They're people who call this place home. You need to start putting God first in your finances. You need to start tithing. Why? Because I, the church needs it. Yeah. And because you need it. And listen, I'm just telling you the principle. As long as you hold on, You'll always have emptiness. The moment you open your hand and give more, God will fill it up. It just, he gives seed to the soul. That's a bold move in the right direction. Now pick up that commitment card because that's the next bold move in the right direction I'm asking you to take. 
I've asked you to pray about it. I want you to keep praying about it. I'm not going to stop talking about it. I'm going to change series. We're going into the best evangelistic season of our church all year long. From now till Christmas Sunday, I'm telling you, it's just, the, it's, we're, there's just going to be, it's going to be amazing. But you're not going to stop hearing about it. I want you to, t- two things. I want you to ask God, God, what could I give the biggest percentage of my, uh, of my plan to stay offering? I'm going to bring on groundbreaking Sunday on December the 12th. And then is there a commitment I can make over the next six months? Now, this is above my tithing and above my offering. Brandy and I are already deciding. Above my tithing, above my offering. It's a stretch for us, but a big sacrifice for us. I'm going to be frank with you. I don't know how. That kind of sacrifice. I'll figure it out. If I deliver pizzas to your house, you just know. When you tip me, it's going to plan to stay. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm not playing. I'm, I refuse to say. we got to keep making bold moves in the, same, in the right direction. I'm asking you on this journey with me. And if you'll do it, Genesis 12 and 2, here's the promise from God. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you. I'll give you the thing. You remember early on in the message I told you that people want to know me and find freedom. I'm I'm sorry, find fame and make a dollar with their life. And Here's what God says. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make you famous. And you'll be, listen, but when God gives it to me, it's not for me. Then I'll make you a blessing to others. Blessing is never just for you. I'm always a conduit of the blessing of God to other people. And I'm asking you to get involved. As you prayerfully consider over the next several weeks with your family, you can turn that card in today. You can turn it in next week. You can turn it in the week after that. But our ushers are always there. There's always an offering box back there. Ask God and do whatever God tells you to do. I'm asking God for half a million dollars. I'm asking you to ask God what part do you play. And then do it. And do it with joy. Don't do it sad. If you come on December the 12th sad, keep your money. Well, don't keep your money. But just get happy about it. (laughs) It'd be better if you just got joy about it. All right? Just be joyful. I get to do this. God doesn't stir us to small, insignificant things. God stirs us to big and bold things. Over the next 25 years, Abram kept making big, bold decisions towards God. 25 years later, Abram ended up in the land of promise. Listen, I don't know how long it would take. I just know this. I plan to stay. I plan to build a house. I plan to stay. I plan to plant gardens and eat the fruit of the gardens. I plan to have children. No more. But I plan to find my child a spouse. You heard that in the Bible. So don't get mad when I don't let them date yours. Because I got to find the one I want them to have. I plan, to, I plan to buy the whole field. I plan to stay. I'd love for you to do the same. I bow your heads for prayer. Lord Jesus. Um, last six weeks, I've sort of given my whole heart to this idea of permanency and home. Father, I pray for people today. God, I'm very simple. I'm just going to end with a simple prayer. God, talk to people's hearts. God, speak to people, every person in the room. The size doesn't matter. The the sacrifice does. It's not, not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice together. So, God, I'm just asking you to speak to people. I ask you for the provision for a permanent home. I ask you to talk to somebody's heart. Now, with your heads bowed in prayer, you're going to ask God about that. But I also want you to ask God, what other areas of my life am I settling? God, where do you want to, where do you want to take me? What, what, what are the memories I need to manage and decide that i got to move forward? God, where, where are some places in my life I have to refuse to settle? God, where are some places in my life that I've stopped dreaming about more and I've just kind of settled into where I've been? God, break me out of that today. Give me a chance to move forward in my life to move my relationships forward, to move our business forward, to move my home forward, to move our marriage forward, to move my relationship with God forward. God, not settling. I just refuse. I'm going to keep making bold steps in the right direction, God. I'm going to make them today. I pray for people today to keep moving forward in the right direction, maybe joining a group or, or, or getting on the team or maybe tithing or praying together or whatever it is, whatever the next bold step in the right direction is. I pray for that. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, that is your next step in the right direction. 
You can do it right now in this room, in this moment. It's as simple as a prayer, but it costs you everything. I didn't say it was easy, but it's simple. The simplicity of the prayer is like this. Everybody's praying. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for my sins, purchasing me, giving me a purpose and a plan. I repent of all of my sins. I give you all my life. Save me today. Take me to places I never dreamed possible. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Come on, do you receive the word of the Lord together, everybody?